In this video we're going to do a little more complex blur using the lens blur feature. And this is something that you can totally do in CS55. I'm going to start with this uh, image. It's a raw image so I'm going to click OK and tell it to open up in uh, Photoshop. This is a picture of Gabriel, my little guy. And this situation, we have a lot that's in focus. It was a bright day and while he's in focus, uh, this needs to be, well, more blurry. And in front, it, we want to make it more blurry. Basically, we want to simulate a depth of field. Okay, make the depth of field much smaller than what it was. So, what I'm going to do is use the first, the quick selection tool. And I'm going to have it select just the little guy. And as I'm doing this, it is just kind of pushing and holding, and that's going to create a selection. Now, it's not going to be perfect. I'm going to have areas that mess up or select too much. If you have areas that mess up or select too much, you can always hold down Alt and it'll take it in. So I'm holding down Alt or the uh, little button with the divot on my tablets. But you can also click up here to subtract. And basically what I want to do is just try and make a pretty good selection. And this is called my rough selection. Now once I make my rough selection, I'm going to do what is called a refine edge. I'm going to click refine edge. And if your view is not in overlay, make it in overlay. And I want to use a uh, brush to kind of fix areas of them. Now I'm going to zoom in and see I got some green over here that's spilled out. And what I want to do is use my brush tool and I have my size set around 50 here. And I'm going to just kind of buff in that hair and see if I can buff around his hair on the edge here to make the selection look cleaner. So it's going to hopefully fix some of these little mishaps, little areas I might have omitted. Maybe maybe around the grass here. See if it'll get rid of that grass. See the grass is turning red when I do that. So it's gonna make a good selection of the grass. And back up the side here where I missed some of his stripes. And do it in small sections, it's much easier. Also you can step backward if you miss one. And there you go. If you accidentally did too much and part of him is disappearing, you can also put this in eraser mode and it'll erase that adjustment. So I could erase this adjustment up here on the top of his head and that green's coming back. I'm going to fix that, put it back here. All right. So anyway, when you're done, we wanted to just return the selection. Okay. So tell it to just output to the selection and click OK. So great. We refined it. Now what? Well, we want to save this selection. So if we say select and save selection, it's going to save it as a new channel. We're going to call it figure. So here's the figure. Now I have my rulers up on my screen. That's because I want to mark where he's sitting. Now I'm going to deselect before I do this and make sure my ruler's up. If not, just go to view until rulers will be up. And then drag your mouse down from the ruler and I'm going to put a line down near his Pompey. And anyway, there's a line there. And this is going to be the line at which I want to make the blur mask. So now I'm going to go to channels and I have my figure. I'm going to add a new channel. We're going to rename it. We're going to call it depth map. And the depth map, I want to be a gradient. So I'm going to switch to my gradient tool. I'm going to make sure it's on tube mode. And I think I want to have it on reverse. And I'm going to click in the middle here, right on that line, and I'm going to hold upwards and hold shift so I get a straight line no matter where I put my mouse. And let's see how that does. Uh, didn't really do too good on that. Let's try it again. All right. No, nope, it's too big. I think I want to reverse that. Yeah, that's what I want. I want it to be white. Yeah, there we go. White on the edges and dark in the middle. That looks much better. So I have my. Um, mask and I want my depth map to look like that. If you want to make it bigger you can. You can just extend it out some more and it'll go a little slower. So you see how that's a little slower of a gradient. And then what I need to do is add my figure to this depth map. Now if I control click this figure channel my mouse will have a little square by it and I'll have him selected. Now what I need to do is fill him. So I'm going to do edit fill with black. Now notice I'm still on my depth map layer. So this is going to make him remain in focus. So if you take a look at this, I'm going to deselect. If you take a look at this, you have the gradient, which represents 
Anything that's black is going to be in focus. Anything that's white is going to be blurry. So it's going to slowly get blurrier in the distance, slowly get blurrier as I approach the camera. I'll go back to RGB, return to my layers, and we'll duplicate our layer. This duplicated layer, we're going to call uh, depth shortened. All right. And this one, we're going to go to filter, blur, and lens blur. And now uh, CS6 will automatically choose a source for me as the depth map, but uh, if it comes up as none, just change it to the depth map. And you can see that you can blur a lot more or less, but you notice the figure always remains in focus. Okay, so that's how you get your figure to remain in focus. You can make some specular highlights by adjusting the threshold here. Just pull it down and you're going to start to see some little dots coming in. Let's see. Yeah, you see how the dots are starting to come in as I adjust these. So anyway, you can play with those to make it look like it's got some, you know, lights coming through with the blurriness. I'm going to leave mine at where it was. And um, anyway, uh, you can change the focal distance and kind of see how this thing's working. See, when I change it here, he becomes blurry, and this is blurry as well. Uh, so it kind of looks weird when you change the focal distance. Having the black be in focus and the white being blurry ends up making making it work the way this does. So when you have a figure that you want to have in front blurry and behind blurry, you want to make sure your blue fo blurry focal distance is zero. So make that make sure that that's zero. And then we're going to go ahead and click OK, and we'll take a look at our picture. and we will hide our guides by just turning off my extras and let's turn off and turn on a blur and you can see how that just makes him more in focus alright so this is an easy way to create the depth of field it can get more complicated if you have more characters um, ones in different distances you can work it differently but uh, to do one figure easiest way thanks for listening